Hey guys, what is up, and welcome to my week 7 predictions for the 2019 NFL season. So, as you can see right now, I did pick the Denver Broncos to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I thought the Chiefs were so injury riddled, they lost two at home, I'm like, that, you know... Patrick Mahomes' ankle is bad, it's this, it's that, they're banged up, blah, 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 blah. Here we are. You know, the defense is bad, and the Broncos couldn't take advantage. So, yeah. Um, though, Patrick Mahomes is going to be out for, it was the best case scenario, it looks like, so it's three weeks. Um, so, basically about a month. I think they might have three games and then a bye. I'm not 100%. Um, that are three games, another game, and then a bye. But it'll be about a month before he's back, give or take. Um, so it was best, best case scenario for the Kansas City Chiefs, which is awesome. Um, Patrick Mahomes, heal up. And um, though I think that means Russell Wilson's basically going to run away with MVP. Yes, Christian McCaffrey's in that conversation, but I, I think it's got to be Russell Wilson. With that said, let's go through my picks. So, Dolphins at Bills. I'm going to take the Bills here. The Bills are favored by like three touchdowns. Dolphins are bad. They're tanking. Whatever. Next. That's like easy. Jags at Bengals. I'm going to pick the Jags here. The Bengals are just a bad team overall. And they may as well just start tanking just like the Dolphins are. All right. Vikings at Lions. I'm going to take the Vikings here. Kirk Cousins has been playing well since he got, well, Adam Thielen called him out, but it's a question of was he calling out Kirk Cousins or was he calling out the coaching staff? But then Stefan Diggs did whatever, he got the ball. They're really starting to pass well with Kirk Cousins, and if they can continue that, they're going to be a playoff team. So I'm going to pick the Vikings in the hopes that they continue to pass the ball and add Dalvin Cook in healthy amounts. Raiders at Packers. I know the Raiders um, have been playing well as of late, but I'm going to pick the Packers. They're just on ride the hot hand. They're they're killing it even without Devontae Adams. Um, Rams at Falcons. I'm going to pick the Rams here. The Falcons are just way too bad for me to pick them. They, I think they've given up on the coach. Um, and it's just a matter of time before Dan Quinn ends up getting fired. Texans at Colts, I am going to pick the Texans here. I understand, now this is actually cool because it's a one point spread. That's how even this is. It's a one point spread. That tells you that if it was the other way, Colts at Texans, the Texans would be favored. Usually if it's a very close game, they'll give the home team um, three points. It would be minus three Colts. Colts minus three, whatever. Um... But it's Colts minus one. That's all, that's what... Sorry, I was fixing my hair. Um, that tells you that's a super close game. Now, I don't do this often. I don't. I like my money. Right where it is. But I did bet money on the Texans. Um, I bet three different things. Each $7, so $21 um, for the three things. I bet the spread, the over-under, and the money line. So, I bet three things, and we'll see how that goes. Um, just and that's like I believe in the Texans that much. Now, if I were, if you were to tell me, "Hey, I need a pick for my pool," go with the Buffalo. But if you want a chance to make a little money, that's what I went with Texans, because basically each thing I bet on, if I'm right, I doubled my money. Which is cool. I bet 21 bucks, and if I win all three things, I get like 40 which is awesome. Um, 49ers at Redskins. I am going to take the 49ers here. The Redskins, I mean, they got one win, and that was against Miami this past week. And it's just the 49ers are way too good to not win this game. Cardinals at Giants. I am going to take the Giants here. Saquon is back. The Cardinals' defense is, mm, I understand, I understand, like, Kyler Murray and all that. And he could abuse that Giants' defense. But I'm going to take the Giants just because I think 
that um, Daniel Jones has a better supporting cast around him than Kyler Murray does. Chargers at Titans. I am going to take the Chargers here. Um, they just lost to Pittsburgh. The Titans just got um, shut out by the Broncos, but they are starting Ryan Tannehill. I think that this week's going to be a bit of a bumpy week. They're going to, it's the same thing when, um, you have a new quarterback and you got to get your cadences down. You got to get the snaps. You got to get like all this different stuff. Like I remember last week was Devlin Hodges, um, first game. Now you had Big Ben, then you had Mason Rudolph, and then you had Devlin Hodges. Now the thing about Big Ben and Mason, they're about the same size. That, you know, 6'5", 230, 240, you know, the typical quarter NFL quarterback size. Devlin Hodges is like 6'1". He's like bigger Mayfield size. So he's in that 6'6", six 6'1", ballpark. And Marquise Pouncey had a hard time snapping the ball to him. It was either low, it was high, it was whatever. You know, he couldn't snap it right, whatever the reason was. So I'm going to watch out for that in this game. Now, Ryan Tannehill and um, Marcus Mariota are similar size, you know, but I'm going to watch out for that because cadence, um, the actual snap itself, you know, tendencies, all that stuff can play a part. And they've only had one week of practice. Watch out. But I'm going to take the Chargers. Um, usually after getting embarrassed, you you end up coming back. Bouncing back the next week. Uh, Saints at Bears. I'm going to take the Saints here. Teddy Bridgewater is 4-0 as a starter for the Saints. And keep going. I mean, you can't help but be happy for him. After everything he's been through, that you know, that terrible knee injury year two or year three that he had, and the fact he's been able to come back, like Teddy Bridgewater gave a speech to the team um, when Drew Brees got hurt, and he said, um, you know, once he had his knee injury, he didn't know if he was ever going to play again. Hell, he didn't know if he was ever going to walk again that was a possibility he wouldn't be able to walk again and the fact he's walking and he's starting he said he was going to give that saints team everything he had and i think minnesota should have kept him you could have gotten him for pretty cheap overall and even if it's like a one-year deal but they couldn't pass up on kirk cousins i guess but, man, if they can win this game and be 5-0, and like, here's the thing. They said Drew Brees was about six weeks. And people are like, okay, Teddy, just need to go 3-3. Three and three. This dude's 4-0 and right now. If he goes 5-0 and or 6-0, and oh, my, like, they don't have to rush Drew back at all. They can literally wait until Drew is 100%. Also, this kind of gives Drew, because the end of last year, it was a little tough for Drew because he had thrown so much over the course of the season. He's getting older. It was a little tough for him. Now he's missing like six weeks and he'll be refreshed when he gets back. So I'm going to be looking for um, Drew Brees when he gets back. But also, how's Teddy do? Now, don't get me wrong. There is not a single quarterback controversy in New Orleans. Not one. Drew Brees is the starter of that team. But because they're, Teddy's 4-0 and right now, it's no rush to get um, Drew Brees back. Let him get 100%. But it's going to be tough versus that Bears defense. Don't get me wrong. But I like um, the Saints in this game. Ravens at Seahawks. Seahawks, please. I'm going to pick you. Please, 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 please beat the Ravens. I need you here. Okay? If you beat the Ravens, that helps my Steelers. Please, the Steelers are two and four. I'm pretty sure the Ravens are like four and two. If you can be four and three, that'd be amazing. That would definitely help. Thank you in advance. Um, so I'm gonna obviously take the Seahawks in hopes that they beat the Ravens. Uh, Eagles at Cowboys. I'm going to take the Eagles, and I'm going to take the Eagles because screw the Cowboys. But. In all honesty, the Cowboys, who did they beat? The Giants with Eli, the Redskins, and the Dolphins. 
Who did they lose to? The Saints with Teddy Bridgewater, the Packers, and the Jets was um, once Sam Darnold came back. So it's not difficult to kind of see who have they beaten and who they've lost to. And I just don't see them winning against good teams. If Dallas goes three and zero to three and four, you're like, "Wow, were we wrong?" And I didn't buy it. I'm like, "Who are they playing? Seriously?" Now you're beating teams that you should beat. Fantastic, good for you. But what happens when you're gonna play teams like the Eagles, like the Saints, like the Packers? Like the Vikings, the Lions, all these good teams. The 49ers. I don't know if they play some or most of those teams. But, um, you know, all these different teams. The Seahawks. You know, what's going to happen when you actually play good teams? And we're seeing it right now. You know, I watch Undisputed. And Skip Bayless has the continuous argument. Dak Prescott leads the league in QBR. Yeah, because of his first three weeks. His first three weeks are is carrying his QBR. What's his QBR in the last three games? You know? And the Dallas Cowboys, over the last three games, have nine points in the first half. They don't score in the first half. They try to establish Zeke. Um, you know, Dak passes a little, but because they're shutting down Zeke, nothing's happening. And then Dak has to throw, and he throws for 350 yards in the total game, and Skip is like, look at my quarterback. It's empty yards. It doesn't mean anything because the Cowboys lost. It doesn't matter. I would rather throw for 100 yards and win than throw for 1,000 yards and lose. Simple. I, that's me. I would rather throw for 100 then throw for a thousand and win, then throw for a thousand, which that's not possible in the game, but throw for a thousand and lose. I don't care if I throw for five yards and then I win and then I throw for 500 and I lose. There's no point. Let's empty yards. Here's the thing. Let's say you threw for 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards, what Patrick Mahomes did last year, but you didn't win a single game. You went 0-16. Are you an MVP candidate? Like, seriously, are you an MVP candidate at that point? Because you, because MVP, most valuable player, your 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards did absolutely nothing in terms of helping your team win. It did nothing in terms of helping your team win. So, therefore, I would not call you the most valuable player. Uh, Patriots at Jets. I'm going to pick the Patriots here. It's not rocket science. They're the Patriots. That's it. Yeah, Sam Darnold and the Jets. Do they have a shot? Sure. If they win, I will happily be wrong. But I got to go with the Patriots here. I have to. The first time they played, Jets didn't have Sam Darnold. See what happens now. First one was in New England. Now it's here. We'll see what happens. All right, so that is going to be my week seven picks for the 2019 NFL season. If you guys enjoyed this, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later. Once I was seven years old, Mama told me, Go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. Once I was seven years old.